For the vast majority of traditional publishing deals, a big marketing budget and plan is not going to be a part of it. This means that no matter how you decide to publish your book, you are going to have to be engaged in selling it and getting it in the hands of readers. These days, readers want authors who are accessible and agents want authors who are actively engaged with readers in an authentic way. Welcome to the Fiction Writing Made Easy podcast. My name is Savannah Gilbo, and I'm here to help you write a story that works. I want to prove to you that writing a novel doesn't have to be overwhelming. So each week, I'll bring you a brand new episode with simple, actionable, and step-by-step strategies that you can implement in your writing right away. So whether you're brand new to writing or more of a seasoned author looking to improve your craft, this podcast is for you. So pick up a pen and let's get started. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of traditional publishing. And I think this is an important topic because, let's face it, figuring out how to navigate the publishing universe can be a little overwhelming if you've never done it before, right? Especially when there's more than one publishing path available to you. So like I mentioned, we are going to look at the pros and cons of the traditional publishing path in this episode. And then next week, we're going to look at the pros and cons of indie publishing. My goal with these two episodes is to help you identify the best publishing path for you and your story, and to hopefully answer some questions you have about the publishing process too. So let's get started with a definition of what it actually means to traditionally publish, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So what is traditional publishing? Traditional publishing refers to the established system of submitting a finished manuscript to agents with the goal of getting a book deal with one of the big five publishers. If you do get an agent and if you do get a book deal, you will be paid a certain amount of money up front and then you will work with a team of people at the publishing house to edit, produce, and distribute your book. Once that's done, the publishing house will work with you to help you get your book in the hands of readers. But this doesn't mean that they will take all the marketing off your hands. We're going to talk about that more in a second. But once your book starts selling, you'll get paid only after you earn out your advance or once the publisher makes back the money they paid you to acquire your manuscript in the first place. So that is a very quick overview of how the traditional publishing process works. Of course, there are many other micro steps involved in this process, but that is a very quick overview. As a freebie for today's episode, I've put together a little one page quiz that will help you determine the best publishing path for you and your story. If you want to download that, you can go to savannahgilbo.com forward slash publishing dash path. So one more time, that is savannahgilbo.com forward slash publishing dash path. And I will link to that in the show notes for easy reference as well. So now let's talk about the pros of traditional publishing or why someone might want to choose to pursue this publishing path. The first pro is that traditional publishers can help get books distributed to bookstores. So bookstores have a limited amount of space, right? And there are hundreds of thousands of books being published every year. So because of the limited space, bookstores have to be selective with the books that they choose to carry. And this is where traditional publishers come in. Sales reps who work for the traditional publishers go around to bookstores and make it very easy for their buyers to select the books they'd like to carry. The sales reps will even make recommendations based on trends they're seeing in the market or any big marketing incentives that they know their publisher is planning. Booksellers trust these sales reps for good reason. They have their pulse on the market and they're backed by a publishing house. So this means that they're more likely to choose books that the sales reps are bringing to their door versus books from individual authors who have self-published. Another thing to consider is that bookstores have to compete with Amazon. Many indie authors use Amazon's services to publish their books because Amazon makes it super easy to do so. But because of this, bookstores are usually not eager to carry self-published books because that means giving business to and competing with Amazon. That being said, there are ways to get your indie published book into bookstores, and we're going to talk about that more next week. I just wanted to mention that there is a small caveat. So this is not a black and white thing. It's just going to be easier for you to get your book into bookstores if you work with a traditional publisher. So that's pro number one. Pro number two is that traditional publishers offer a team of professionals to work with. So many authors say that they only want to write, which is why they want a publisher to handle the rest of it. And it makes sense, right? This is a traditional publisher's superpower. They employ editors and the art directors and proofreaders and the salespeople who can all help you bring your book to life and bring it to market. 
They do this work all day long and they do nothing but this work, so they are really, really good at it. But all of that being said, you probably won't get as much marketing help as you're hoping for. And we're gonna talk about this more later on, but basically the marketing effort a publisher puts into a project is going to depend on how much they've already invested. In most cases, the marketing efforts that a publisher puts into a project, they're going to be focused more on attracting booksellers rather than readers. That being said, you should at least get a sales team to take your book to bookstores. So again, pro number two is traditional publishers offer a team of professionals to work with, which in a lot of cases can seem like a really big pro. Pro number three is that traditional publishing doesn't come with any upfront financial costs. And this is another big selling point for traditional publishing. You don't have to pay anyone to get a publishing deal. And if you are asked for money, then it's not a traditional publishing deal. It's usually a vanity publisher. And if you're approached by one, you should be very, very careful. But let's say that you're in communication with a traditional publisher about getting your book published. And let's say you do get a publishing deal. You will usually get some kind of advance against royalties. The average author advance is usually around 5,000 to 10,000 US dollars, but there are now deals where authors can take smaller advances to earn higher royalties or no advance at all. So you'll find all of that out from your publisher. But one thing to remember is that any advance you get is against royalties, which are usually between 7 and 25% of the net book price. So if you do get an advance of, let's say, $10,000, you will have to earn more than $10,000 out of your royalty rate on net book sales before you get any money. So that piece could be a pro or a con depending on how you look at it. But pro number three is that traditional publishing does not come with any upfront financial costs. Pro number four is that literary prizes are more likely if you traditionally publish. So many literary prizes aren't open to indie authors. And if winning a literary prize or getting any kind of critical acclaim is on your wish list, then traditional publishing might be the better path for you to pursue. However, just being traditionally published doesn't guarantee you will win a literary prize or get any kind of critical acclaim. So I'm just saying you can at least go for it if you traditionally publish. And again, like most things in the writing world, there are exceptions, but it's still rare for an indie author to even be allowed to enter a literary contest. So pro number four, literary prizes are more likely if you traditionally publish. Pro number five is that traditional publishing offers a sense of validation and prestige. So many authors want the stamp of industry approval that comes with a traditional publishing deal, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting this for the record. We all know that writing a book can be a struggle sometimes, and I'm sure we all suffer from self-doubt from time to time. If you do make it through the process of getting an agent and then a publisher, approval by these gatekeepers usually feels like validation that your work is good enough. So I think on some level, a lot of us seek this. And even if if your book doesn't sell very well, it's still published by Tor or whatever publisher, you know, you've still been published by Tor, you have that stamp of approval. So if industry validation is important to you, then this might be the deciding factor in pursuing traditional publishers. And that's pro number five. So with that, we're going to move into the cons of traditional publishing. So we're going to take a look at the flip side of the coin here. Con number one is that traditional publishing can be very slow. So on average, it takes one to two years for a traditionally published book to come to market. If you consider all the time it took you to write and edit the book, which is probably one to two years, possibly longer, plus the time it takes to get an agent, which could be another one to two years, and then all the time it takes to go through the publishing process, which is likely going to be another one to two years, it can start to feel like a very, very long time until you're going to see your book in the market. If you compare that to indie publishing or self-publishing on Amazon, where your book can be on sale in a matter of hours, and then you can be paid 60 days later for any sales, it might seem like a no-brainer to go the indie publishing route if speed to market is important to you. So that is con number one, traditional publishing can be very slow. Con number two is that traditional publishing does not pay most writers very well. Royalty rates for a traditionally published book can range from anywhere between 7% and 25%, with the latter being on the extremely generous end. 
On average, traditionally published writers get around 15% of the net sales price of a book. So that means that all the discounts, returns, marketing costs, and overheads are taken out of the total before the profit percentage is calculated. And then out of that profit percentage, a traditionally published author has to pay their agent about 15%. So at the end of the day, the percentage that a traditionally published author gets paid is somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15% of the price that the book sells for, which in the age of Amazon is often a discounted price. This setup works super well for the top 1% of writers. So Stephen King, J.K. Rowling, Colleen Hoover, but it doesn't work so well for writers who are in the middle or the bottom tier. So this can be a really big con. Traditional publishing does not pay most writers very well. Con number three is that traditional publishing means giving up creative control. So when you work with a traditional publisher, they will gather a team of professionals to edit and produce your novel. That means you will not have creative control over many aspects of the process, including things like what the cover of your book will look like, what price it will be sold for, when it will come out, and how it will be promoted. This also means that you might not like the final title or cover they choose for your novel. You might also get an editor that you don't agree with, or they might take a different marketing approach to your novel than you would. So that's con number three. Traditional publishing means giving up creative control. And this can be a really big con if you do want that creative control. So just something to think about. Con number four is that traditional publishing does not offer significant marketing help. And if you're multitasking at this part of the episode, I want you to pay attention to this one part because it's really important. So a traditional publisher is not going to help you market your book in any kind of significant way unless you get a big advance. And by that, I mean high five or six figures. If a book gets a big advance, the publisher has a big stake in earning that money back and will put more effort into marketing. But for the vast majority of traditional publishing deals, a big marketing budget and plan is not going to be a part of it. This means that no matter how you decide to publish your book, you are going to have to be engaged in selling it and getting it in the hands of readers. These days, readers want authors who are accessible and agents want authors who are actively engaged with readers in an authentic way. This is what agents and publishers mean when they ask writers about their platform. They're basically asking, do you have people interested and waiting to buy this book? Do you have people that you communicate with on a regular basis? And if the answer is yes, that's going to be very appealing to traditional publishers. Because like we just talked about, unless you get one of those big advances, their marketing plan and their marketing budget is probably not going to be very large for your book. So again, this is a really big deal. Traditional publishing does not offer significant marketing help unless you get a big advance. And that's con number four. Con number five is that traditional publishing can mean limiting contract clauses. So when it comes to signing contracts with agents or publishers, there are a few big and possibly limiting things to keep an eye out for. For example, a do not compete clause could stop you from publishing under the same author name or in the same story world or with the same characters during the term of your contract. That means if you sign a three book deal with one new book coming out every year, it could be three to four years in which you're not allowed to publish anything else under that author name or in that story world or with those characters. So how would you feel about that? The other thing to keep an eye out for is the clause that states what happens if the relationship doesn't work out or if you decide to move on to a different publishing path. Once you sign a contract for your book, it essentially belongs to the publisher. So think about a situation where you sign your book away for the life of a copyright. That's the length of your life plus 70 years after you die. And that's a really big deal. One of the worst things you can do is make decisions based on the logic that you should be grateful for any type of deal or that you should just take any kind of contract or terms that you're offered. I've seen this in real life where many authors will sign deals because they just think that they should be grateful that they've been offered anything, but it's not a good strategy. You really need to value your work and do what's best for you in the long term. So that is con number five. Traditional publishing can sometimes offer limiting contract clauses. Now let's do a really quick recap of the pros and cons of traditional publishing. Pro number one is that traditional publishers can help get your books distributed to bookstores. Pro number two is traditional publishers offer a team of professionals to work with. Pro number three is that traditional publishing does not come with any upfront financial costs. Pro number four is that literary prizes are more likely if you traditionally publish. 
Pro number five is that traditional publishing offers a sense of validation and prestige. So those are the five main pros. Now we'll recap the five main cons. Con number one is that traditional publishing can be very slow. Con number two is traditional publishing does not pay most writers very well. Con number three is that traditional publishing means giving up creative control. Con number four is that traditional publishing does not offer significant marketing help. That one's really important. And con number five is that traditional publishing can mean limiting contract clauses. So now that you know the pros and cons of traditional publishing, what do you think? Is traditional publishing the right publishing path for you? If you're having a hard time deciding, answer these two questions. Number one, why do you want to publish your book? And number two, what does success look like for you? You might be surprised by your answers or you might be surprised that there's one reason or one thing that you want that rises to the surface. And before you make your final decision, I want you to consider something really important. Most readers are not going to care who your publisher is. That's not how they shop for stories. All they care about is reading something that's entertaining and that will give them the emotional experience they're looking for. In most cases, the publisher responsible for producing a book only means something to you, to other authors, and to those in the industry. Now, as a quick reminder, if you want to download the freebie for today's episode, that is a quick little quiz that'll help you determine the right publishing path for you. You can go to savannagilbo.com forward slash publishing dash path. So one more time, that's savannagilbo.com forward slash publishing dash path. The other thing I want to leave you with is that many authors use multiple forms of publishing for their different projects. So you aren't limited to just traditional publishing or just indie publishing. And like I mentioned earlier, we are going to talk about the pros and cons of indie publishing next week. So if you're torn, maybe just have a listen to that episode before deciding anything. But regardless of which publishing path you do choose, always do your due diligence and talk to other authors or industry professionals who can recommend the services or the publishers or give advice about contracts before you sign anything. I'm going to put a few links in the blog post that goes along with today's episode. So there will be links to resources and also links to different watchdog sites that help authors stay abreast of any scams or just anything kind of bad that's going on in terms of publishing. So head on over to the blog post that goes along with today's episode if you want to check those out. So that's it for today's show. As always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in and showing your support. If you want to check out any of the links I mentioned in this episode, you can find them over at savannagilbo.com forward slash podcast. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the show because there's going to be another brand new episode coming out next week. If you're an Apple user, I'd really appreciate it if you took a few seconds to leave a quick rating and review. Your ratings and reviews tell iTunes that this is a podcast that's worth listening to. And in turn, that helps this show get in front of more fiction writers just like you. So that's it for today's show. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then, happy writing.